All right, guys, if you haven't heard, this coming Saturday, October 14th, is our DeVos Garage open house featuring Edison Motors and Topsy. So if there is any car show that you had to go to this year, this is the one. VNR's Scrap Yard, not the one on Silver Street, Victoria Avenue, right off the QEW. We're gonna do a cruise through beautiful wine country in Niagara Falls. We're gonna end up at the show, so we're gonna start that at 11. You'll find the address on our website, complete instructions, but if you meet us in the parking lot at the arena there, we'll all cruise together up Clifton Hill and then all the back country and exploring beautiful colors and all of that. We wanna see you guys, rain or shine. Uh, we are gonna have a tent, racing simulator, the Audi will be there, the 55, the 95, the Kenworth, the low boy, if I can get this done in time. And if I can get this done in time, you can get your ride done in time. Don't show up to work, finish your rides, go on the cruise, see you on Saturday. Here we go. Okay, so now we got some wood with the trailer under control. We gotta get some wood for it. Kevin said he had some logs, but now the longer that we're looking at them, the uh, the worse they're looking because they all kind of have lots of cracks in there. So we took pictures and we're sending them um, to the guy, but yeah, they're already all starting, right? So the only two real good ones are those two big ones. Yeah, the green stuff, right? I don't care about not so much as long as it's all just split. Oh, it's not how long. I don't care how long. Like 10 feet is fine. I'll just stagger the cuts. Okay. But it's 20, the well is 26 feet and it's eight feet wide minus the I-beams in the middle. So probably six feet, I would say. But yeah, this is, this by far, this is the best one. Yeah. That's a Already working on it, buddy. <laughs> your, your truck's getting a little rough, Andy. I think we should build you an old, old roll-off or something. Oh, that'd be impossible to build. <laughs> no one has one of those. Put yourself into weird weird situations on a regular basis. You're not afraid of getting yourself into weird situations. It's really not that bad. That went a lot better than I thought. Good job, buddy. Thanks. All right. Um, that's not a weird situation. That's like a legal situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just going through You're town. Projecting yourself. <laughs> yeah. He looks good. He's got straps on it. No, we should try one more. I'm just thinking though. If Try to get that other big one, and then it hits that one, then it rolls that one off, and all of a sudden... No, no, no. So if you pull this one as far forward as possible, we'll throw yep. a chain on it so it can't go. All right. And then we'll try and winch the other one beside it. And then as long as they're kind of staggered, throw a bunch of chains around it, and we're all good. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Don't, don't put the four ways on. Yeah. I'll drive behind you. All right. Watch that whole pile just coming rolling down. Okay. Turn all the way left. I got your e-brake. You're good. Chain on him? Well, that one's not rolling. Nope. All right, so we're back at Ed's. Um, Ed. 
What do you do? Is this your full-time job? No. Oh, no. okay. This is just a side business. Oh, okay. So yes. you you take randos off the street like me who give you incredibly hard old wood and try Heavy. to make magic from it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, so, totally. So what do you, what do you run? Uh, Woodland, Woodland Mills HM126. Okay. Uh, cutting capacity is 26 inch log diameter, 16 foot five. Okay. Um, Cause yeah, Andy said he can you can do 48 inches, and nope. we're 34. And I got here, I'm like, he can't do that. No. But you've cut this with a chainsaw. In a cor in, into a corner. Yes. Into a corner. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Yes, it is. <laughs> so we would have just brought you the other branch. There's a pile of other branches. We would have left these, but we figure ah, this would have the most wood wood in it. But uh, okay, so I need two inch thick boards by eight inches, I think. Um, yeah, 24s, yeah, 8 inches. So, what's the plan? Well, we're going to start cutting into it. Uh, we'll go down two cuts. We'll take the last slab off. We'll put it on the forks. That one we can square up after we do everything else on here. And uh, just go piece by piece. Okay. So, it's all manual, right? You yes, everything is oh. manual. <laughs> so, you don't, you don't have a gym membership? No, no, not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very bad. All right, so we're, we're going to hit this with the four inches right at the end there. That will give us a one by four for your next project. Okay. So is it is it dry? Uh, yeah, as soon as you get in a little bit more, it is a little wetter. It's still a little wet yes. in the middle? Okay, because it's been sitting for probably a decade. Yeah, so even if it's been sitting, it's uh, it'll still have moisture in the middle of the okay, log. But you're not too worried about it shrinking or contracting? No, I put white oak on trailers and bolted it down, and then it's been good. Okay. Okay, sun's down. We got, you figure a third? A third. A third. Nice. So we'll be back tomorrow and do the rest. Yes. Gonna charge the batteries on us and the cam on the cameras. <laughs> Change some film cards and we're good. All right, thanks, Eddie. No problem. See you Thank you. Yep. See ya. Before, but we had cut two inches off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, day two. We're back at it. Um, Eddie's already been at it for a couple hours already. Took me a bit to get going this morning, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I kind of want a mill now. But 
no point in buying every tool when you can just hire this guy right here. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so basically, I get kind of a gist of it now. Is you just throw the logs on, start squaring it off. Yep. So basically, you just skim, skim the top. We're limited to seven inches on the throat there. So we go to the top, we skim it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Make sure you're square. Yep. Um, once yesterday, we didn't because the logs are so heavy. We didn't get one side perfectly square. So then we had to roll it an extra time and just skim that little corner off. Yeah. But uh, I think we actually have enough logs to do our trailer and probably the 55. And there's a pile more logs there. So Kevin's going to start cutting those boards up. He told me by the time I get to those boards, he'll be a grandpa. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see if we get the roll off going and get some more logs here. But uh, I think Andy's got a bunch of logs that he needs cut. So you got work for a while. Yes, yes. For... <laughs> For a couple of weeks <laughs> yes as a side hobby yeah <laughs> nice so we're gonna cut some 11s today that will go along the side of the trailer and my little flip outs and some uh, nines for the rest of them and that should take care of me on low boy so great there we go That gives me more of a headache than the fumes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it will. It will? Okay. <laughs> yeah. it might, we might need to trim just a little. Yeah. Another thing we can do is, well, we can't go much further this way. So what we're going to do, we take a small cut off. Well, not small, but a decent cut off the top. We'll know what we're up against anyway. Yes. And we have to trim off say two feet with the chainsaw we can probably yeah, i think and probably just that little bit and, uh, and yeah. maybe even this little just this little nub here but we're not at that height yet no so that's not a problem right now until we cross that bridge <laughs> future pro <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a problem when your hardwood is too big but it is today Never ran into that before. I'm so tired. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm not going to videotape myself tying this down because I'm going to get a lot of comments on how I should have done it better. But. <laughs> as long as it doesn't fall off, you're good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you. All right. From here, we're going to take it home. We're going to cut them, put them on the trailer, and then we'll stain them and bolt them down. So. Lots of work to go, but uh, appreciate it, Ed. And no problem. Where can, where are you? Where can we get you? Uh, Bucks, Bucks Bell and Boots. Okay, yeah, that's your day job, but how yeah, do we I'll... get you to cut wood for us? Yeah, yeah, I like uh, woodwork smelling. Okay. That's, that's my business. All right, sounds good. <laughs> All right, that's it. Uh, yeah, here we go. going with is a deck and siding stain beauty tone uh, you can get this at home hardware and uh, we actually took uh, some of the touch-up paint left over from the Kenworth from the cab over scanned it and took it in and found some swatches that were pretty well dead on so that's that's our custom color and uh, they mixed that for us it's a, an acrylic alkalide formula still gives it durability of having the oil in it but 
It's also acrylic, so it cleans up really easily. We haven't seen the uh, long lasting effects of it, but it goes on really well. It covers really nice. I mean, with any dark stain, you're gonna have to touch this up every couple years. So we're expecting to do that, but we, we opted to go this route. Maybe you guys have had different experience with uh, some, some different stain. Um, let us know your experiences. We opted not to go for a sealer on this over top just because we don't want a slippery deck at the end of the day. It's probably gonna get scuffed up pretty heavily with what we're loading on top of it. So not too, too worried about that, but we did want to get a close match. So that uh, looks pretty sharp. We're going down the road. All right, ready to paint. Splash some paint on there. But I want you guys to remember this is not a 67 GTO or a compound turbo Cummins or a really nice old Bronco. This is a trailer that's gonna hold equipment and a tank on it. So um, I'm not gonna sand the whole thing back down again. We're gonna start with the pressure wash. Then I'm gonna uh, blow dry it all clean and dry. And that's probably the best that we're going to do. There's still some things I got to fix on it. Some bent lips here and there, but I run out of the season. So we're going to get some paint on it and I can touch up stuff inside the shop later. Uh, tarp some stuff off. I'm going to get some overspray on stuff, but that's okay. Because it's just a piece of equipment that mainly I just don't want to see all rusty. We're going to scratch it. We're going to dent it. We got some really nice stained boards to go on it. We're going to crack those and chip those and it's going to be multicolor but it looked really nice <laughs> right after we finished putting it all together but as soon as we put it to work we're going to scratch it so i'm not going to get too too carried away we got a pile of time into the um suspension and stiffening this trailer up um so definitely check out all those videos but for now temperature's right um we get occasional sun and cloud there's no wind so it's a perfect day to splash some paint on it so um we're gonna use some ppg paint uh we got a nice tan it's the same color as the transport truck we got a slow reducer because it's a large area for me to do so uh, i'll probably do the back half first spray a whole bunch that no yes no yes i don't know um the hose has to go over the trailer because i'm far away from everything so i gotta do the far side first we're gonna do all the sides that all the pieces that we can't see and they're going to flip them over and then paint because you know, there's a lot of hidden stuff there so we we'll paint on the back side of this and behind it and then when we and when it hangs there we can paint over top it's a little tricky it's not like a car where it's all flat so we got to paint behind here first then we can flip these up then we can paint um the sides and the bottom it gets tricky but uh anyway um priming it let me figure out how to go about this as best as possible but she's not a it'll be a show trailer for about six months and then it'll just beat up like every other low boy out there so um, we're gonna mix the paint paint is four to two parts reducer to one part hardener and um get some protective stuff on i got my mask there and away we go We got uh, Doug and Steve, Steve here <laughs> from uh, Pro Fleet Care. Got a hold of them the other day and uh, I said, hey, do you guys want to come in and uh, spray down some of our vehicles? And right away he said, yes, let's do it. So I'm excited to get these guys here. That's going to be the next step before the wood goes on the, uh, the drop deck. doing here. 
the main thing that undercoating does and uh, the benefits of that would be to protect the steel and prevent uh, rust from forming. So we have two different oils. One's uh, a thinner penetrating oil that gets into all the nooks and crannies. And then we have a thicker, um, like a non-drip is more for the, for the frame and stuff like that. So that prevents washout. It's a two-stage process more or less so that uh, with the two different oils, it really protects and prolongs the life of the, the metal. And uh, yeah, it's a really good idea for this climate and any, anyone that deals with salt and rust and benefits everything. Yeah, we're in the rust belt here, so uh, everything gets rusty rotted pretty quick. Um, I don't think we want to see any rust on this ever. So we'll see what <laughs> we can do here. Okay, looking at the trailer. Looks like it did a really nice job. Not too slimy, it's all there, it's all greasy. Yeah, they put all nice grease on there too. We're all set to throw the boards on there, but now, um, now comes the crappy part. It is about the same amount of fun putting the new boards on as it is taking the old ones off. Uh, it's not good, it's not, it's not fun. Not fun at all. Uh, a lot of broken drill bits, a lot of heavy boards. Um, hopefully we cut them to the right width, but a quarter inch off here, there, means I gotta run a skill saw beside them. It's just a pain in the butt. That's all there is to it. Even gave me a couple cans, just in case. I need to uh, touch up some spots. Excellent. So this is pretty cool actually, if you think about it, we're taking this old piece of scrap that was sitting in a yard for almost four years and breathing new life into it with the wood from a hundred year old white oak. Now that tree took decades and decades to grow so we could cut it up and use it one last time to uh, make something beautiful again. Bolting these things down, I'm using 3 8 carriage bolts, which is probably excessive, but um, at the same time, we're putting the lock nuts on the bottom, and I know that it's done right. Uh, after multiple drill bits of whatever I found in my shop, I bought a couple good ones, which seemed to last a little longer, but when you catch an old uh, self-tapper or different steels, it just puts that little dull edge on there, and unfortunately, it chews up a bit. Expensive bits break just as easy as cheap ones, um, but I pretty much went through every drill bit, every 3 8 drill bit that I had in the shop. Um, I had uh, Joseph, a co-op student, you'll see him a little bit more as well. He's given me a hand underneath. And uh, now we have a, uh, the biggest part of this build is done. This was a huge undertaking, but i um, very, very happy with all the work that was done. Here we go. All right, guys, there it is. Man, doesn't that look good? Go back to the first video and see how we picked this thing up. And if you're wondering why um, there haven't been as many videos on the other channel, well, there's your answer. That's a lot of labor, a lot of time that went into that, but I want to do it right. Um, there's no messing around with safety when you got uh, your AZ license or your CDL. Um, everything's got to be right. So i um, very confident in all my work and can't wait to get going on the gooseneck. Also can't wait to get out from working in the driveway because uh, a lot of people seem to be stopping by. And I uh, gotta be honest, if you don't have my personal cell phone and number and you can't give me a call to see if I want a coffee, I don't really want you on the property because I'm working. I got a lot of stuff to do. We got so much stuff on the go. Go to the other channel and uh, check out that Fargo build. Um, that's all that should be up on the channel if not very shortly but um, the time to meet me and the time to see the projects is during our open houses which is October 14th that's where I want to shake your hand that's where I want to meet you and uh, it's gonna be epic Edison Motors is gonna be there with Topsy if you don't know who those guys are you need to go follow them it's a pretty special event that 
It just happened to be that they're from BC, 4,000 kilometers away, something like 3,000 miles, 2,600 miles away. Um, and they are gonna be at the open house. We're gonna have food, gift prizes from Princess Auto. We're gonna have the racing simulator from Pennzoil. We are also gonna do a cruise from Niagara Falls to the car show. Follow us on Instagram because we'll have all those details there. But it's gonna be a pretty awesome time from about 11 till six, uh, drive till uh, the show's over. So plan to be there at their Victoria Yard, not Silver Street. They have multiple yards. VNR has multiple yards. It's the one on Victoria, close to Highway 20 that goes to Fawn Hill. But if you're coming from the highway QEW, just take uh, Victoria Avenue and stay on it until um, you hit the 20 and it's just past it on the left. So, um, hope to see you guys there. Uh, I hope to scratch the crap out of this thing when we put the tank on it. Hopefully I'll have the tank there as well. Still gotta get a safety and a bunch of stuff done. So I'm gonna be super busy this week. Um, don't stop by my house and don't bug me because I've got a lot of stuff to do. Stop by the open house on October 14th. So, uh, remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich, get out there and work on it. Take an old piece of crap and um, that's destined for the scrapyard. All, all, all these things. I spend a little bit of time on them, make them brand new, make them yours, and uh, but nobody's gonna do it for you. You gotta get out there and put in the elbow grease. Here we go.